we begin our lecture with the following example. We have three capacitors connected as shown. Okay, a bank of capacitors. And then we have an LTI resistor to which some of the charge will, uh, uh, will go through. Okay. Then here we have a switch which initially is open and it will be closed at some later time. It's given to be 12 seconds. Capacitances are 3F, 6 farads, 4 farads, and the voltages are labeled as V1, and V2, and here we have the voltage of the third capacitor, and it's the 2 ohm resistor. Now, the initial conditions are given as V1 initial is 5 volts and initial voltage for the second capacitor is 1 volt. Okay. Not that, we're not given the initial uh, voltage for V3 because by KVL. It cannot be chosen arbitrarily. The three must be plus minus this voltage plus V1. And this voltage is minus V2. Therefore, V3 is minus V2 plus V1. Therefore, the initial V3 is can be uh, computed from this information. And what we are asked for is the uh, evolution of the third capacitor voltage for future times. Okay. So what's going to happen is, first, note that these capacitors are connected in such a way that they can be reduced into a single capacitor. Okay. So as far as this 2 ohm resistor is concerned, then uh, we can talk about an equivalent capa capacitance. Okay. So in that case, we will have a just a first order homogeneous case, because there is no input in this circuit. And then we can solve that. And that would have been our solution for V3 if we didn't have this switch. But this switch closes at t equals 12 uh, second, and that changes things to begin with. It changes the differential equation. So what we have to do is we have to figure out the new differential equation. We have to figure out the new initial condition for t equals 12 second because that switch may, in fact, it will uh, make certain capacitor voltages jump. Okay, so we will have some discontinuities. We have to figure out the result of those discontinuities. And starting from our new initial condition and a new time, new initial time, we have to figure out the piece of the, uh, the voltage, V3, starting from t equals 12 to infinity. Okay, so therefore, this is uh, a two-stage Problem. Okay, in fact, it's maybe a three-stage problem because first we're going to figure out what happens between time t equals zero and twelve minus, and then we're going to figure out the discontinuities at uh, at the time t equals twelve seconds. So we have to make an analysis of the interval from t equals twelve minus to twelve plus, and then we have the third stage, which is from t equals 12 plus to uh, infinity. Okay. So let's therefore uh, begin our first interval of analysis. Okay. From 0 until 12. Okay. So for t in that range, we can just forget about the switch, okay? because it's open circuit and uh, doesn't we don't have to be bothered by that. And what we have is three capacitors connected in this 
reducible weight. 6F, 3F, 4F plus minus V3. This is too old. And this is equivalent to this very simple topology plus minus V3. This is and this equivalent capacitance is 36 in series. Therefore, the equivalent capacitance would be 2 farads. And then we have 2 and 4 in parallel. The equivalent capacitance will be 6 farads. So this is 6 farads, which we obtain as first obtaining, uh, connecting this and that in series and obtaining the equivalent capacitance. And then that equivalent capacitance will be parallel to 4. And that gives us 6 lines. So we have the circuit from which we can easily obtain the function equation. And then the initial condition, V3, 0 equals V1, 0, plus minus V2, 0. Okay. We have minus V2, 0. And initial capacitor voltages for V1. The first and second capacitor are given as 5 and 1. Therefore, 5 minus 1, we have 4 volts. Okay. So we can write the solution immediately for this simplest of all cases. What we have is V3 T equals initial voltage with V0 and then e to the minus t over time constant. And time constant for that configuration is Rc, okay, which is 12. Therefore, V3 t equals 4 e to the minus t over 12 volts. Okay. So that's the answer, not forever, but for this interval at least. Now, we, the next thing we will do, we will figure out what the uh, initial condition of the third capacitor voltage becomes after the switch is shut. And for that, we require the voltages of V1, well, V1 in particular, just before the switch is shut at T equals of minus okay. so even though we ask for V3 only we have to figure out also V1 for, uh, for this interval because we will need that information uh, to figure out the capacitor voltage V3 after this which is shared so and it's a nice exercise so let's also talk about what happens to V1 of t and V2 of t during this interval? Okay. How about V1 of t and V2 of t? Okay, first by KL, before the switch is shut, we have this relation between three voltages. Okay, V1 minus V2 equals V3. And what else? We know. We can write the we can write the uh, terminal equations V1 t equals V1 0 plus 1 over the capacitance, which is 1 over 3. And then from 0 to t by 1 tau e tau. Okay, and this is here I1. And V2 t equals V2 0 plus 1 over 6 from 0 to T. I2 tau D tau. Now that the polarity of the second capacitor voltage is given as plus minus, so by the passive sign convention, this is I2. And it's clear that I2 is minus I1. Okay, so minus I1 tau D tau. Okay, so that's 
B2. And then what we can write is the following. So just if you put this uh, integral to the left-hand side, for this guy, the right-hand side is what? Three times, excuse me, three V1 T minus V1 zero. Okay, so that equals this integral. Now that also equals, you look at uh, the bottom equation, we have uh, minus that integral equals 6 times v2 minus v20. Therefore, that equals 6 times v20 minus v20. Okay. And that equals 6 v20. Okay. v2 is what? v1 minus v3. Therefore, we can write minus v1 of t plus v3 of t instead of minus v2 t here. Okay. Now, so what we have is this guy equals this. And what we know is v1 0, v2 0, v3 t, that's just what we figured out. And the only unknown in this equation is v1. Hence, we can write v1 t equals 7 over 3 plus 2 third v3 t and v2 t from kvr can be written as 7 over 3 minus 1 third v3 t okay so that's what v1 and v2 are before the switch is closed. Okay, now we're ready to perform the analysis for the infinitesimally tiny interval from uh, t equals 12 minus 2, t equals 12 plus. This is when the switch is closing. When the switch closes, the second capacitor becomes shorted and it's, in a sense, uh, it gets decoupled from the rest of the circuit. So we don't have to worry about that. What happens is, what we have to consider is that the switch is making V1 and V3 of the sudden become parallel. Okay, so it forces the voltages to uh, become equal. Okay, so we can consider, we can concentrate on the interesting part of the circuit where we have two capacitors, capacitor 1 and capacitor 3, becoming parallel all of a sudden. This is V1, this current here is I1, this is R3 via capacitor. And for F, I3 and this is R V3. Okay, this is our first capacitor, fourth uh, capacitor. And this is now, switch is now closing. Now, here. Okay. T equals 12 seconds. Okay. So, well, this V3 is also connected to the resistor, okay, from which we're having the rest of current by R, but we don't have to draw that. It's not really important for our analysis. <clears throat> okay, so what we're trying to figure out now is the voltages after the switch is shut. Okay, the voltage is at T equals 12 plus. For that, what we require is we need the voltages just before the switch is uh, closed. Okay, so the voltage is at 12 minus. And together the voltage at t equals 12 minus. 
what we have to do is we have to we, we can use the, the expressions that we have found for v3 and v1 okay so v1 at 12 minus equals 7 over 3 plus 8 over 3e volts and v3 12 minus equals 4 over e volts and e is 2.71828 okay so we know the initial voltages and by initial now we need t equals 12 minus and then we have to figure out what the voltages are at t equals 12 plus so let's do that Observe that we 12 minus is different than we 3 12 minus. Okay, so these voltages are not the same before the switch shuts, but it must be that we want 12 plus equals we 3 12 plus by KVL when the switch is shut. Okay, because they become parallel. So that means those voltages will have to experience a jump discontinuity because all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, the voltages become equal from non-equal uh, levels. So we deduce therefore that the current passing through them in this time interval must be of, in, of impossible nature. Okay, so that means we have to be dealing with the positive current. Okay, so again, let's write the differential equation, excuse me, the terminal equations for the capacitive voltage. So V1 12 plus equals V1 12 minus plus 1 over the capacitance, 1 over 3, and then you integrate from 12 minus to 12 plus I1 T dt. Okay. So that's for V1. And for V3, V3 12 plus, which must equal V1 12 plus, also equals V3 12 minus plus 1 over the capacitance, which is 4. And then you integrate from 12 minus to 12 plus I3, uh, I3t. Okay. And what's I3t? So if you write KCL at this point, what we have is I1 plus IR. IR is the current coming from the resistor, which is connected in parallel with the capacitor here, okay? and plus I3 equals zero. Therefore, we can express I3 in terms of I1 and IR. If you do that, you have minus I1 T minus IR T ET. Okay, now we don't know what IRT is, but we don't know what I1 T is. So at this point, but we don't have to know what IRT is. Okay, why is that? Because the the uh, internal of integration is of infinitesimal uh, time length. Okay, and IRT is a bounded current. We know that it cannot be impulsive. Why it cannot be impulsive? Because this is the capacitor. Capacitor voltage is the same as the uh, resistor voltage, and the capacitor voltage, by assumption, remains bounded at all times. It can make jumps, but it's bounded at all times. Therefore, the resistor voltage is bounded. If resistor voltage is bounded by the external equation, resistor current must also be bounded. Okay? So I, R of T, even though we don't know what it is exactly, we know that it must be a bounded car. Therefore, we can just ignore it because it will not have any contribution to the integral and we can write
minus 1 over 4, 12 minus 12 plus 5, 1, d, d, d. Okay. And then the rest is easy. We can write the, this integral, the integral of y1, equals Okay, three times v1 12 plus minus u1 12 minus and we uh, 1 12 plus is the same as v3 12 plus so we can write from the first equation and using this identity three times v3 12 plus <coughs> minus v1 12 minus okay so that's what we gathered from the first integral from the second equation, second integral, again, we can leave this guy on the left hand side and so on. And right hand side, in that case, becomes 4 times V3 12 minus minus V3 12 plus. Okay. Now, we're done with the integral, we can forget about it now because all we needed was this equation. Okay. Now, in this equation, what are unknowns? And what are unknowns? We 3 12 plus is unknown. In fact, that's what we need, but what we're trying to compute for the analysis, or for the part of the analysis, for times larger than 12. Okay. So this is unknown. This is known, which we computed from the first part of our analysis. This is also known, we 3 12 minus. And also here, we 3 12 plus, same as this guy. Therefore, the only unknown is we 3 12 plus and can be computed as follows. V3 12 plus must equal C1 V1 12 minus plus C2 V2 12 minus Y by C1 Sorry, this should be 3. C1 plus C3, the sum of the passes. Okay. That yields 1 over 7. Okay. 3 plus 4. And then 7 plus A over E plus 16E. Which is about 2.26 volts. Okay, so we 312 plus is now in our disposal and we can now start our analysis for times larger than 12 seconds. Larger than 12. Now we have the following configuration. Okay. R, two capacitors. Now we forget about the second capacitor because the switch is shut now and it's decoupled from the rest of the circuit. 3F, 4F, plus minus V3. And this is 2 ohms. Okay, and we just computed the new initial condition, V3 12 plus, which is 2.26 volts. Now this circuit clearly is equivalent to this simple topology where we can replace this power pair of capacitors by a single capacitor whose equivalent, whose capacitance is 3 plus uh, 4, 7. So F plus minus V3, and this is 2 ohm. The time constant is 14 seconds. The initial condition is this 2.26 volts, therefore V3 T equals 2.26 times E to D minus 
t minus the inch of time, and now the inch of time is 12, or with the time constant, okay, 14. Oops. And for times larger than 12, from that point on, nothing, uh, nothing changes in, this, uh, in the circuit topology. Therefore, everything remains valid, the differential equation and so on. That means this solution is the solution for the rest of the time. Okay. So that's the end of our analysis. Now let's summarize what we figured out in, in a sketch. start from, B3 starts from 4 volts, and it's decaying toward zero, okay? And if nothing happened, if nothing uh, had happened, then that, that was, the curve would be quite simple, starting from 4 and decaying exponentially to zero, but at t equals 12 Second, V3 at that time, V3 is about 1.47. Okay, that's our V3 12 minus, and from that voltage, uh, it jumps to 2.26 because the switch is sharp and some of the charge from V1 is transferred to V3, even at the end. That transfer took place instantaneously. So from 147, it jumped to 226, something like this. To 26. And then from that point on, it again decays towards you okay, with a different time constant. Okay. The time constant here was 12, and the time constant now here is 14. Okay. okay, now let's move on to our next example, which again we will deal in a piecewise fashion. Okay. We will uh, divide the interval time from 0 to infinity between subintervals, and we're going to do analysis by subintervals. By sub okay. okay, this time. We deal with the following circuit, which has a constant current source, or at least for a while, S. We have the capacitor, and then the capacitor is connected to a one port, which is which can be thought as a piecewise linear. Two ohm, this is a diode, and here we have a battery of four volts. The capacitance is two farads, and this is our capacitor voltage, VC. And as for the uh, current, IS, input to the circuit, it has the following. Waveform zero for its constant for a while, but not forever. Okay. It jumps to zero and remains zero for the rest of the time, and this uh, stepping down occurs at t equals 4 seconds. Okay. 
or else we need mean initial condition of the capacitor. Dc0 is given to be minus 1 volt. And what we ask for is evolution of capacitor voltage for future times. Okay. So for the solution or depict the solution on let's obtain the uh, voltage current characteristics of this one port to which the capacitor is connected. For that, let's label this current as ID, D for diode. Okay. So, the VCID curve has the following shape. starting from 0 to T1. Okay. Now the question is what's T1? We don't know it yet. T1 is the time or the first time uh, that something changes in this circuit. Not that there are certain things that can change. For instance, the, the current can change from what? This is 5 and 6. From 5 to 0. That's one thing that can change. And depending on where you are on the I, I D B C curve, we can uh, cross, we have to cross this break point, okay, so that's another change, and such changes will change the differential equation, and change in the differential equation will change the evolution, okay, so therefore we start doing our analysis for this interval, but we don't know what T1 is yet, okay, so we have to figure out. So, but at least we know that for a while, starting from T equals zero to some some non-zero and throughout some non-zero length of time, we know that okay, we start at here minus one. So this is t equals zero. This is where we start. Okay? Because what? Well, because v c is minus one. So that's given. V c zero is minus one. So if v c zero is minus one, then we know what the current is. I d equals zero. I d equals zero means that this one port, we can now ignore it, it behaves like an open circuit. And what we have is we have a current source that pumps constant current to the, uh, to the capacitor. Therefore, the charge will rise linearly with constant slope and we will be, uh, we will be able to easily obtain VC. Okay, so we see now initially it's charged starting from minus one volt, it's increasing. Okay with a constant slope. So ID equals zero initially. So that means IC equals, so this is IC equals IS. Okay? So IS, this is IC, this is open circuit, therefore all the current from 
the source is flowing through the capacitor. So that means what? IC is 2D VC, terminal equation, and that equals for a while at least 5. So that's the constant current that's being pumped by the source. And that means the, uh, the capacitor voltage will be a line, and that line passes from the point T equals 0 and VC equals minus 1. Hence, you can easily write the capacitor for VCT is minus 1. So that's our initial VCT. And then from that point, it rises with slope 5 over 2. 5 over 2 T. Okay. So for a while, at least the capacitor voltage will follow that path. Okay. So this means we are at minus 1 initially, and as time goes on, we become, Vc becomes larger and larger. Hence, starting from this point, we are moving toward right, for a while at least. Now, the question we have to answer now is, what's T1? Okay. So T1 is the time for the first time, that something changes in this circuit. So therefore something changes in the transition horizon. So T1 should then be the earliest of the following two times. Ta and Tb, let's call them, where Ta is where there are two things that can change. Either the, the source stops pumping current, okay, and that happens at t equals 4, or we reach break point, okay, in the, uh, in the IDVC curve. So TA, let's call it the time where the, uh, the current stops. When IST becomes 0, and VC TB and TB is where when the uh, when we reach the break point. Okay, reaching the break point means that VC becomes four. So VC TB by definition must be equal to four. Okay, and this is the break point. Four seconds. Let's figure out TV and figure out TV. You plug in four to the left hand side here, and the T that you obtain is your TV. So minus one plus five over two TV equals four. Therefore, TV equals two seconds. That means this change occurs earlier, and hence T1 must be okay, 2 seconds. And at that point in time, our new voltage, the voltage of the capacitor, is followed. Okay. Now, T equals 0, and then at T equals T1, T1 is 2 seconds, we reach the break point. Okay. Then what? Reaching the break point means that this uh, dial becomes now short circuit, and then this part of the circuit is now part of the game. Okay. And because of that, the differential equation will change, and because of that, the evolution of the capacitor voltage will change. And we have to now figure out what that change might be. Okay, T1 less than T 
less than T2. Now T2 is the next possible change in the circuit. Now, since diode is now uh, on, it's, it's behaved like a short circuit, and we have IS equals IC plus ID. Therefore, IS is 5 because we are now around T equals 2 seconds and at that time the current source is still active. Okay, it pumps current. Okay. Equals IC is 2D VC plus ID. And what's ID? Talking about this part of the curve, it's ID here equals Vc minus 4 over 2. Okay, so let's see um, this expression of the curve. So let's write it down plus Vc minus 4 over 2, and this is our differential equation. So let's reorganize it so that it looks prettier. We have dVc plus 1 fourth Vc equals 7 over 2. First order number, which is differential equation with constant right hand side and we know the initial condition for both therefore we can immediately write the answer let me write that down VCT equals 14 minus 10 e to d minus t minus 2 over 4 okay. so what happens is at t equals 2 Vc is 4, and what happens is, as time goes on, this becomes smaller and smaller, so we're rising, we're converging toward 14. So that means Vc is now still increasing. Okay? So we start from t, uh, Vc equals minus 1, okay? we moved right, we reached the point Vc equals 4, and then the French equation changes, but still Vc increases, therefore we'll, uh, we're moving uh, up in that now what we have to figure out is T2. Okay, so that's the next thing that might uh, change in this circuit. T2. Okay, so there's no other breakpoint at least in that direction. So we don't have to look at this curve, I and C curve. So there's only one source of change in the circuit, and that's regarding the source. IS will become 0 at t equals 4 seconds. When this guy is 0, then the differential equation changes and uh, for the evolution of VC changes. So let's figure that out. T2 has to be 4 seconds when the current source stops. It becomes 0. Therefore, we have to figure out the next initial condition that we require VCT2 equals 14 minus 10 and then plug in T equals 4 here that makes minus 1 half E minus 1 half and that's about 8 volts okay. so what happens is Start from minus one, we reach four, we, uh, we continue to climb until we reach somewhere around eight. Okay. And that's the next change uh, happening. T equals T2, and T2 we figured out to equal four seconds. Okay. Now, the question is. What is going to happen to VC from this point forward? Is it going to keep climbing or is it now going down, going to the left? For that, we have to reobtain the new differential equation. And let's do that.
T2 less than equal to T less than T3. Next part. Now, T2 was 4, and then for times larger than 4, IS is 0. IS equals 0, we're at that point. VC equals 8, therefore the dial is still on. And what we have is IC plus ID equals 0, okay, by case here. And then IC is 2D VC, and ID is VC minus 4 over 2, so that's what that curve uh, gives us. And that equals 0. Hence, DVC plus 1 over 4 VC equals 1. Okay. Another uh, first order non homogeneous differential coordinate. And for that, we know the initial condition. The new initial condition is 8 volts, and we can be easily write that the solution. What we have is VCT equals 4 plus VC4 minus 4 E to D minus 1 over 4. Okay. T minus 4 over 4. Okay. Okay, now the question is, what's T3? What's the next change that happens in the circuit? Now, we don't have to worry about the source, uh, the current source for this model. Um, and the only, uh, the only possible change is now we're moving toward, uh, toward left once again. We, we no longer uh, keep rising. Starting from T2 equals 4 seconds. Okay, so we're going down. The only possible change that can happen is again we hit the breakpoint. Okay, and breakpoint when VC becomes 4. Now let's look at this equation. Initially it's somewhere around 8, and what happens is this becomes smaller and smaller. So as this becomes smaller and smaller, we're going closer and closer to 4. Okay, we're converging to 4, but we never exactly reach 4. But this is always something tiny and positive. So that means we never exactly hit the breakpoint. VC never becomes exactly 4. So that means T3 is infinity. Nothing else changes in the circuit. And this is the final piece of the puzzle. Okay, so T3. Since nothing will change, T3 is infinite. So let's finally summarize our findings in a sketch. linearly for a while until T1 equals 2 seconds. Okay. And then from that point onwards we want to converge to 14. If this, would, this is what would have happened if the uh, source kept pumping 5 amps of current, but it stops pumping current at T equals 4. Therefore, here at T2 equals 4, something changes.
this is about 8 volts. Okay? So something changes and we are no longer converging for 14. Instead, we are converging down to 4. Okay? So therefore, this is no longer what's going to happen. Instead, from t equals 4 until the end of time, we keep converging toward 4. 